hybrid approach, uh, that means a combination uh, of a surgical epicardial ablation and uh, endocardial uh, uh, electrophysiologic uh, ablation is really uh, a good modality to treat patient with a persistent or long-lasting persistent atrophy ablation. ablation. One of the advantages is just uh, to uh, combine uh, the expertise of the surgeon and the knowledge of the electrophysiology uh, with the uh, EP in the same uh, procedure. One of the, uh, I think, main aspect is just to do in a one-time procedure uh, two uh, ablations, uh, the epicardial and the endocardial. And uh, this approach uh, may increase, actually, uh, the uh, success rate of the procedure in the long run. I, I do really think that um, the, uh, the key efficacy uh, is just the fact that the uh, surgeon can really view in real time of what he's doing and therefore it can create uh, actually a uh, transmural lesion, something that we cannot do with uh, our current uh, technology. But at the same time, as a, an electrophysiologist, uh, I can uh, check you know, what the surgeon has done, and therefore I can touch up uh, you know, just in case uh, uh, there are some gaps you know, during uh, the ablation in the linear lesion. So I, I do really think that these two components are really crucial uh, to uh, clarify and to explain why hybrid approach uh, is really you know, a, a way uh, to increase the success rate in patients uh, with a persistent atrial fibrillation. If we uh, compare uh, the uh, long-term clinical outcome after uh, hybrid uh, you know, uh, ablation, this is much higher uh, than the conventional transcatheter ablation in patients uh, with uh, long-lasting persistent atrial fibrillation. And uh, already we have uh, in the international literature robust data supporting uh, this approach. So I think that uh, one of the way uh, one of the ways just to overcome the uh, you know uh, people who are skeptical uh, in terms uh, of uh, sending patients to the surgeon is just to show them uh, that uh, already we have a really robust data in the literature showing that the hybrid approach is uh, absolutely uh, superior uh, to transcatheter ablation uh, in uh, treating uh, those categories of patients. Surely, a uh, patient with the uh, uh, previous uh, unsuccessful uh, transcatheter ablations, uh, people in uh, persistent atrial fibrillation, that means probably uh, with the uh, arrhythmia uh, uh, which uh, you know, lasts more than a year, suffering uh, from uh, the arrhythmia just because uh, they have a poor quality of life. So I think that this you know, kind of patients uh, are just more suitable uh, to, to be a good candidate for hybrid approach. I'm not uh, including a patient with a, a lone atrial fibrillation or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation uh, because um, these patients uh, can be you know, successfully treated with the conventional transcatheter ablation. But I, I would include all patients with long-lasting persistent atrial fibrillation.